What's up guys, Thermaltake has been in the water cooling game for quite a while and ever since I started going to CES it seems that every year they talk about putting out an all-inclusive, all-in-one custom water cooling kit. Well last year they finally did it with the M360 Plus. I took a look at this on the channel last year when it did come out. It seems to be a really solid kit with a lot of good components but people had some very specific complaints about it. Primarily it was the price. This was a $500 kit and didn't even include a GPU water block. But also there were some concerns about mixing metals as the radiator included was aluminum. I spoke to Thermaltake about this at CES and they said they had been working on some concepts for a full copper radiator so that you don't have to worry about mixing metals and getting any galvanic corrosion. Well, this arrived at the office the other day, the C360 DDC hard tube kit. And this kit actually addresses every single one of the complaints that people had about this kit. And it's $180 less. Dude, I can't wait to get my hands on this thing. I've been waiting for so long. That's what she said. <laughs> Did you really have to wear those glasses? Yeah, dude, I needed a disguise too. Jeez. Oh, dude, I got it. I got it. I got it. So we've gotten rid of the M360 because we're going to focus on this, the new C360 DDC kit. Uh, we're not going to build a system with this today because for the most part, a lot of what comes with it is very similar to the M360 kit, which we already looked at in quite a bit of detail last year. But I wanted to see what Thermaltake sent over, what's in here, what makes this better, and how somehow they were able to get it to be significantly cheaper. So we're gonna do an unboxing, which I don't generally do, and uh, we're gonna take a closer look at all the components that they sent over. So starting off, we got some instructions. Uh, this just is the install instructions for the block, how to switch the bracket on the block uh, from Intel to AMD. Then a few more, a few more instructions we don't need to go into. You have, please read before installing that we won't read. Uh, we have warranty information, which we won't read. All right, now we get to the good stuff. So one of the ways that Thermaltake has actually saved significant dollars here, these things aren't standing up at all is by switching the fans. These are the new Pure 12 addressable RGB fans from Thermaltake. Thermaltake has kind of become synonymous with the ring design that they've been pushing over the last couple of years where the LEDs are embedded into the fan frame and shine inwards. These, the LEDs are actually in the center hub and emanate outwards using the kind of frosted semi-opaque blades to help diffuse the light. They still look pretty good. They're not quite as bright. And Thermaltake still does call them radiator fans. Now, that could have any number of meanings, but I looked up the static pressure rating on these and it was only one point, I think it was 1.6 is what I remember. So they're not gonna be the absolute best, but as long as you're not trying to move air through an extremely dense fin array on a radiator, these should do just fine. So let's see what kind of radiator they did send. Well, I guess first we're gonna get to the block actually, cause that's what's on top. And this is the, the same block that came with the M360 kit. This is their Pacific W4? W4, all right. This is again, an addressable RGB block. Looks pretty cool. Uh, I've used it before, it cools pretty well. It's a CPU block. Aha, and then we get to the biggest change from one kit to the other, and that's the radiator. Now, this is a full copper radiator. Thermaltake only just fairly recently started to make copper radiators. Previously, they had been all in on aluminum. Now, I actually specifically asked them about galvanic corrosion with the M360 kit, because a lot of people were expressing concerns. Obviously, it's something that I noticed as soon as I opened the box that dealing with an aluminum radiator and copper blocks and nickel in the blocks as well, and you, you never know what's gonna end up happening there. They assured me that they had done testing and there was a coating on the inside of the radiators that would prevent the corrosion. 
But for peace of mind, I think it's just better overall if you just go with full copper and you don't have to worry about putting any kind of coating on the inside to prevent anything bad from happening. Just just use the right materials right off the bat. So that is what they did here. This is a significantly thinner radiator that came with the M360 kit. The M360 kit came with, I think, a 64 millimeter radiator. It was absurdly large. And to be honest, probably overkill for most of what you guys might be doing with a kit like this, especially because, like I said, there's no GPU block included. So this is a 25 millimeter radiator, maybe it's a 30, 25 or 30 millimeters, uh, with a kind of like a medium fin density going on, and it's full copper. So that is the most important thing that you could take away from this, that you don't have to worry about mixing metals and galvanic corrosion. The next thing in the box are the fittings. And I'll pull out, I guess, a couple of different examples of them. This kit came with all black fittings. I'm, to be honest, not entirely sure if they have kits that come with nickel fittings or any other color, but the black is really nice. And these are their C Pro fittings. This is maybe my favorite fitting design that I've ever worked with. The Z height on these is almost non-existent, meaning that when you're trying to manipulate tubes and put them into fittings, sometimes it is very difficult because there might be some significant height here, but you need the tubes to be longer to insert into the fitting to make a proper seal. Well, Thermaltake has taken away the gymnastics that you're gonna need to kind of wedge a tube into a uh, fitting that has a high collar on it because they've taken all the seal and put it into the collar itself. So now you put the tube onto this platform as opposed to into something and then this is what makes the seal. So I do really like these fittings. This is a very innovative idea and it comes in very handy when doing builds, especially when you're working in tight spaces. And the black looks pretty good too. Included in the kit are, looks like two 90 degree adapters. So you don't get a huge number of additional fittings, but you can just purchase additional ones from Thermaltake or Newegg or Amazon or something like that. Uh, you could use any fittings you want with this kit because it's all G1 quarter compatible. But if you wanna stay within the Thermaltake ecosystem, make sure that everything matches, just buy additional Thermaltake fittings. You could pick them up for a couple bucks depending on what you need. Diving down deeper into the box, what do we have here? Oh, a fill, a fill bottle. This is a nice little handy thing that Thermaltake throws in. This isn't particularly expensive no matter where you buy it, but this comes in super handy when when filling your loop. So you don't have to get, uh, you don't have to have a, a dedicated fill port if you don't want to. You can just fill your reservoir directly with this. Uh, also, it allows you to reach into spaces. This is very flexible. So this is really nice and handy to have, even though I have like a million of them in there. Uh, but good, this is a good inclusion, especially if this is gonna be sold to beginners. Next up is the coolant, the T1000 Pure Clear. Uh, Thermaltake has kind of gotten into a little trouble with their pastels, so I am definitely glad that they included a clear. This is a premix, so it's got all your biocides in here, uh, all your anti-corrosives, and you could very easily dye this. You could buy a tiny little dropper bottle from Mayhem's or something like that, and you can make this blue or green or yellow. They have changed the formula, apparently. This is a T1000, it used to come with a C1000. I don't know what the difference is, but it's coolant, it's clear, it'll work. Next is the pump res combo. So the M360, I believe, came with a D5 pump. Now, those, while being super functional, are a little bit larger, and the, the reservoir that came with it as well was also quite big. This is a little easier to fit into, especially smaller builds, but it's still plenty large enough so that it is visible inside of your case. Uh, I like working with DDC pumps as well. So the pump rest combo uh, looks like it is not necessarily an improvement here, but it's not much, if, if any, of a downgrade. If you want a larger reservoir, these unscrew and you could just buy a longer tube. So if you need to decorate the inside of your case, it's very easy to do. But this by itself should be plenty for most people. Uh, you have your outlet here, you have two different inlets, including a downspout inside of the reservoir tube. And uh, yeah, not much to say about this. Pump res combo, nice and compact, uh, looks good. Next up in here, oh, I guess we might as well pull out the tubing. How much tubing do they give us? Is there more? There is more. There's 
There's more than that. Fives. Jeez, there's two more in here. So they give you six, looks like half meter lengths of 16 millimeter hard tube. This is PETG. This is much easier to work with, with for, than acrylic, especially for beginners. So I'm definitely glad that they're going that route. I'm also glad that they are including hard tube in these kinds of kits. A lot of people just getting into water cooling are intimidated by using hard tubing. It takes practice. People that have been doing this for years still make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time, but it's definitely good to get people uh, to try it because you're not gonna learn unless you do it. So yeah, looks like we got uh, one, two, three meters of uh, 16 millimeter PETG hard tube. Some more stuff in here, huh? Oh, we got a silicone insert hose. Again, great for beginners. This is an all-inclusive kit, so this is what you need to put into the tube before you bend it, otherwise it will lose its integrity and collapse on itself. So uh, most, uh, most beginners are not going to have this and they might not even know that they need it. So kudos to Thermaltake for throwing this in. Actually, I don't need this. I don't need the bag. Get this, get this hose out of the bag. Bags out of here. Mounting hardware for radiator and fans. Uh, mounting bracket for the pump res combo. Looks like, uh, nope, this is not a 120 millimeter uh, mount. It looks like it'll mount. You'd have to either drill into the case uh, or you'd have to have some pre-drilled holes like say a fractal design case that has all those uh, holes along the back wall. We've got some RGB control stuff. All right, so this is different than, I think, this is different than Thermaltake's uh, existing RGB ecosystem. These use, these use a different kind of, unfortunately, still proprietary plug. However, the controller has shrunk down from a box that's maybe, you know, three inches by three inches to a tiny little uh, three button system. So it's a lot easier to fit into a case which is good. Uh, I don't know if the functionality is the same. I'll have to look into that. Again, like I said, I'm not gonna be putting this, I'm not gonna be installing this immediately, so I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but because they have an addressable system in the fans and in the blocks, then I would assume that there is gonna be some additional functionality here. You could probably tie this into, uh, hey, hey, you can. So here, one of the cables, it has a, a, an addressable five volt header. So you can just plug it directly into the motherboard, which is good. More stuff, there's more stuff. They give you a, a power supply jumper, which is nice. So for those of you guys who aren't familiar, when you do your first water cooling system, when you do any water cooling system, you should always test your loop without the rest of the components plugged in. That way, if you get a leak, there's no power running through your motherboard or your CPU or your graphics card, and you're not gonna get any shorts as a result of that. Things can, electronics can get wet as long as they dry before you use them. So this allows you to jump your power supply to let it run without the 24 pin being plugged into the motherboard. So that way you could run the power supply with one SATA out to your pump res combo, and allow the pump to run to fill the loop and to see if you have any leaks before you plug in the rest of your stuff. And this is a must have for any anybody doing any kind of custom water cooling. And a lot of other functions that these have too. But yeah, this is really good to have. And it looks like this bag is just mounting hardware for the CPU block and also the um, bracket to switch it over to AM4. And uh, yeah, a lot of screws and stuff like that in here. Is there anything else in here? Anything? This is your last chance to come out. No, I think that's it. Let's get the tubing out though. Just because we can. And I'll never get it back into this box the way it was, which is which is awesome. Hey, there's more too. There's more too. So alright, you get four meters of tube. I'm glad I dug into that box. So I am super happy to see that Thermaltake has listened to their customer base who said, we like the M360 kit. We want more of that, but we need it to be a little cheaper. We need it to have cost, uh, copper radiators. And then we're all in because there was a lot of excitement generated by the video that I did when I took a look at that M360 kit last year. People were really enthusiastic about it because 
choosing the parts for your loop is one of the most intimidating parts about getting into custom water cooling. Thermal take takes all that guesswork out of it. Everything you need is here. And now you don't have to worry about mixing metals and you're spending $180 less. This is a $320 kit versus 500. Much easier of a pill to swallow. Then you can add onto it later. You could add a second, you could add a GPU block, you could add two GPU blocks, you could add a second radiator, you could upgrade the pump res if you want. You could swap out the fans, I guess, but these fans should be fine for now. So yeah, again, super happy that Thermaltake is doing this. It seems to be a step in the right direction for the industry. And uh, what do you guys think? Is this something that you're interested in uh, purchasing? Let me know down below in the comments. As always guys, thanks for watching. Check out the merchandise store, link down below if you wanna get in on any of this sweet gear. And uh, I guess that's it. Thanks for watching guys, see you later. Uh, yeah, signing off now, this was super awkward. Bye.